So my son was about four years old, maybe five. He had never seen me in a wig before. My hair, um, I was growing it. It was in the middle. I was, you know, I was in that ugly stage. It was too short to be long and too long to be short. And it was, I was just having a rough time figuring out what to do with my hair. And I still had to go to work and um, things like that. And you want to look good when you, when it's time to look good. And dealing with this length of hair that I was not used to dealing with you know, didn't have a ton of styles, all that kind of stuff, right? So I was like, you know what? Instead of dealing with this hair all the time, let me just buy a wig. People wear them all the time. So go to the wig store. This Korean lady helps me out. I love the Koreans in the beauty supply store. She was like, Annyeong, oh, I got wigs for you. Oh yeah, I got, let try this one on, try that one on. So she has me trying on different wigs and she is spot on. Like she's been doing this for a long time. She got everything right. So I put this wig on. It looked so natural. This was before lace fronts, I guess. I'm not sure. But this wig was the bomb, okay? It looked so good. So, bought the wig, come home. I wore that joker home. I was like, I look good with this bad boy on. So I, you know, I feel like I put on a different wig and I just, I feel like a different person. Sometimes I might put a wig on and feel, I don't know. It just makes me feel rich. I start smelling myself. Other wigs, I might put it on and I feel sexy. I, I don't know. I just like, it just makes me feel like a whole different persona. So I come home with the wig on and my son, somehow, I think somebody picked him up from school or I picked him up for, from school. I'm not sure, but we get home and I'm sitting in the living room reading a newspaper like people used to do back in the day. So... I'm reading a newspaper and my son is just circling, looking at me, looking at my hairline. You know, I'm just, I'm sitting here, you know, with the newspaper so he can see like this much of my face. And I, I'm looking over the newspaper and I'm just kicking it to myself because I'm like, he knows this is not my real hair. And I know that he cannot tell like exactly where the wig starts and my hair is real. And it's just messing his little head up. So I'm just sitting there reading the newspaper and then he just, he goes around behind the chair that I was sitting in and all of a sudden, snatch, he snatched the wig off. <laughs> he snatched my wig off and he went running upstairs and I just started dying laughing and I was like, come back here, boy. Get back my hair, boy. Get back my hair. Get my hair, boy. Don't be able to run off my wig, boy. Get my wig, boy. Hey, get my hair, boy. Like I was just, you know, <laughs> an old lady. But I chased him up the stairs and grabbed his little butt and just tickled him. And we just had the biggest laugh out of it. It was so much fun. So that's the story of um, my son. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I came home with a wig, he just snatched it off and went running. All right. I hope that made you laugh. Hope you guys have a beautiful day, a wonderful day. Hey, listen, I got to plug my book, Bedroom Secrets of an Ex-Lesbian. I used to be gay a long time ago. I don't know why I'm tearing up. Mm. Can y'all see that? I don't know. Whatever. But, um... I'm not used to wearing makeup. I can't wait to snatch this wig off. <laughs> it's crazy.
rub all this stuff off my face. But anyway, um, I used to be gay a long time ago. I was gay for years and, and I was happy that way. Um, until God actually confronted me about it and he demanded that I make a choice and, uh, I chose to give men another try and it was just gone. It was just gone. So, but while I was like that, I made sure to, um, know all the ABCs and one, two, threes of being able to give women multiple orgasms. I used to have a 10 orgasm quota within the first hour of making love to my girlfriends because I wanted to be the best lover they ever had. No man had ever done that for me. And so I figured if I could do that for them, then that would already, you know, put me in like, if I ain't number one, I'm in the top five, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and it worked, it worked. I didn't want my girlfriends to leave me. I wanted to have fun in my relationships. I didn't want a bunch of arguing. I didn't want a bunch of problems. And um, <laughs> you'd be surprised. <laughs> you'd be surprised when you, you know, throwing things down in the bedroom and you the champion in the bedroom. You you get a whole lot of act right. <laughs> so um, anyway, in my audio book, Bedroom Secrets of an Ex-Lesbian, I give all those step-by-step -step instructions um, for how to do that. So, you know, if you don't have a lot of confidence in the bedroom, if you kind of get performance anxiety when it's time to perform, um, you don't want to feel like that. You want to be relaxed. You know, you want to, you want to be like Bruce Lee said, you know, a good fighter, he's not tense, but he's ready. Well, a good lover, you don't want to be tense, but you want to be ready. And so that readiness comes from knowing what you're doing, being familiar with all those lady parts and all that good stuff. And so I put the link to my audio book is in the description. Um, and also, if you are a woman and you have never had an orgasm while being intimate, then you got to learn your own body parts and how to manipulate your own body parts so that if your partner needs a little bit of help, you know, then you can help him out and you can get there. You should always have orgasms like unless you don't feel like having an orgasm, um, which that can happen. I've <laughs> had situations where I was just like, just get off, please. Just <laughs> oh, we ain't gonna talk about that. <laughs> you know what, write down in the comments if you wanna hear. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to hear about situations like that where a woman is just like, you know what, I'd rather pass. But anyway, um, yeah, so check the book out and um, don't judge me because I used to be gay. Don't judge me because I'm not gay anymore. You know, uh, this is my story. I experienced what I experienced. If you haven't experienced that or if you you know, if if you don't know anything about what I've experienced or whatever, you know, it's just not been your experience. This is my experience. So I own it. Okay. It was my life, <laughs> whether you like it or not. Anyway, so you guys have an amazing day. I hope that I put a smile on your face. I hope that if you do want the book get the book that it brings you and your spouse or lover just all kinds of blissful joy and i hope you have joy and peace in your life all the time anyway all right y'all take care